I, I remember writing to Roger Strauss, my publisher in New York. So I wrote him an outline, which he liked very much. And then, let me see, I, I just, uh, it took me two years to write it because I, I could see that I had to go to Russia. It was still under, you know, before, uh, before Russia became what it is now. And so I, I flew to, uh, to Moscow. I didn't have any contacts in Russia at all. I just decided that I will go. And most pe my husband was very worried about it. But I said, well, what can they do? Nothing. So uh, I flew to uh, Moscow. And there, naturally, as it was in those days, I had a, a follow as somebody who, a very nice woman, actually, an interest guide who, who had to accompany me. So I stayed in Moscow two or three days. And then I got onto the Trans-Siberian Express. And uh, that was quite funny, really, because there is this wonderful train that people, now it's much more luxurious than it was then. The trip is very flat because Russia is such an enormous country and it's a very, very flat business, so it gets very monotonous. The trip was supposed to take six days and after the third day, I said I can't stand it anymore. And I was, I'm very susceptible to scent and thing. And I thought there were lots of unwashed people about and I got almost hysterical. I said, I can't take it. And so I said, by then we had got to uh, Omsk uh, and which was more than half a journey. And so I said, let's get out. And the, the, the guardian angel was terrified. She said, my God, I shall lose my job. I said, no, you won't. And, and we, so we got out and take a plane. She said, you are going to lose your ticket. I said, never mind. And we had to wait about six hours at the airport for the, for the plane. And there was a typical thing of the regime. We, when the, uh, the plane arrived, there, was, there were quite a lot of people waiting for it. And uh, I said, well, how can we get on it? Because we don't have reserves. He said, don't worry at all. Uh, we have more time, they have more time than we have. <laughs> so I felt rather badly about it. However, we got onto the plane and we got to Irkutsk. And Irkutsk was lovely. I did not go the same way that Maria went. Maria went on, a, on a, Maria of course went by sled. But I tried to retrace her steps. But uh, Irkutsk, uh, I remember the great feeling of uh, relief when we got to Irkutsk. Because it was, they called it the Paris of Siberia. And it was all white, and there was, uh, there were 90, Irkutsk used to be a great trading center. So they had quite a lot of very comfortable looking houses. And also there was the palace of the governor of Siberia, Muraviev Amurski. After Irkutsk, there was a long way to, for me to go because I had to cheat, I had to cross Lake Baikal. And of course, crossing Lake Baikal was immensely uh, was, uh, dramatic because it was uh, still solid ice, all, although it was middle of uh, the winter. And the, the, there is something about Lake Baikal that the natives, of respect enormously, that it's a kind of mystic. It's a lovely setting with the mountains of Transbaikalia. So when, when I arrived there, if I, you still had to go by carriage. You, you could, there, there was no way to cross it really. So I could, I could see what Maria went through. The horses are specially short to hit the ice. And it takes about four hours to cross. And it, it was, it, that was the most dramatic part of the journey. Yeah. 
And then once I was the other side of Lake Baikal, well, they went to, uh, to Cheetah. Funny enough, the same houses were there, much, uh, much damaged, but they were. And there's many of these houses were preserved. And then the, in Petrovsky Zavod, the other place. But then, as you know, they returned to, to Irkutsk. By then I had in, been in Russia for about three weeks. And I was pretty tired because it was a high tension thing. And uh, a very annoying thing happened on my last day in Russia because it was at the time of Afghanistan. And we were sitting at the airport and my guide, so-called guide, disappeared. And she was uh, reporting to Moscow what I'd been doing. And she hadn't realized that I understood enough Russia, uh, Russian. And so when she came back, I rather stupidly said, oh, you have been complaining about me because I always wanted to go to other places. And she was so furious that she said, well, you can have another guide, but you will have to be here for another five, six days. So I was terrified that I couldn't get out for five, six, I was ready to go. And I had also had a watch stolen, which was even worse. No, but I, she changed her mind eventually. And so we took the plane back to, uh, this time we took the plane back to uh, St. Petersburg. And my husband met me at the airport. At, and I was so strung up that the minute I got through the customs, I burst into tears. And he said, was it that awful? <laughs> but I was also afraid that they might question some of the manuscripts that I had. But luckily, they didn't open anything. All the way in the plane, I was worried that I might want to take away some of the papers and, and things. But no, nothing happened. Yes. Then I went to New York, and I finished the book in New York. Uh, because there was a brilliant editor there, my editor-in-chief, uh, Robert Giroux. And all throughout, my publisher, Roger Strauss, was tremendously helpful. He kept telephoning and, uh, and so I, w I finished the book there.